Welcome to Get Sleepy, where we listen, we relax, and we get sleepy. As always, I'm your host, Thomas. Thanks so much for being here. Tonight, TK will be reading to us as we revisit the Country Antiques Market to attend a festive evening of special holiday shopping. We'll browse through handmade crafts and vintage treasures. Then, after soaking up the ambience, we'll enjoy an evening snack while the snow falls. So, as we prepare for tonight's story, find a comfortable position and begin to focus on the breath. Slowly breathe in for five, four, three, two, one, and exhale for five, four, three, two, one. Try your best to breathe slowly and deeply, and as your mind switches off, your body becomes loose and relaxed. Let's practice a small moment of gratitude for your body. Your legs carried you throughout the day. Your neck held your head high. Your hands helped you accomplish your goals and every other part of your body did what you needed it to do to get through the day. Take this moment to smile inward and say thank you body for taking care of me throughout the day. Now, I'll hand over to TK for tonight's story. Picture yourself preparing for a night of leisurely festivities with snow in the forecast. This is where our story begins. It's one of those chilly, late afternoons when you might be tempted to cozy up by the fire. The holiday season is in full swing, and you've done your fair share of socializing lately. Today, however, You have special plans with a good friend. The two of you are going to spend some time at your favorite antique store, soaking up the festive atmosphere. This store in the country isn't a place that is normally open in the evening but they are staying open later than usual today. In addition to all kinds of wonderful holiday displays, they have also promised some seasonal entertainment. You and your friend have agreed that it's the perfect excuse for you to catch up together and also to get some shopping done. To get there, you'll be taking a 40-minute trip 
out into the countryside. Your friend has offered to drive, so, of course, you're providing the hot chocolate. While you wait for him to pick you up, you carefully pour delicious-smelling cocoa into two travel mugs, topping each one with a marshmallow. Inhaling the chocolate scent deeply, you smile and carefully tighten the lids. These will be wonderful to sip on as you enjoy your leisurely trip through the countryside. You hear a car pull into the driveway and wave to your friend through the window. You slip into your coziest jacket and then Return to the counter for the travel mugs. Cradling them in your arm, you step onto your porch and lock your door behind you. Then you breathe in the invigorating air outside. It still hints at that faint smell of fallen leaves. But it also has the fresh, damp feeling that tells you snow is coming. You are filled with a sense of delightful anticipation. Your friend pushes the car door open from the inside, allowing you to carefully set a mug in each cup holder. Holiday music is playing on the radio. He greets you warmly and thanks you for the hot chocolate. Settling comfortably into the front seat, you pull the door shut, buckle your seatbelt, and tell him that you are ready to go. As you head out of your suburban neighborhood, you can see that just about everyone has gotten their decorations up. It's still daytime, but you can see wreaths hanging on doors and lights strung along roof lines. A few very enthusiastic folks have put candy canes or reindeer in their yards At one point, you pass a house where a couple appear to be involved in an earnest discussion about how to hang decorations on their enormous pine tree in the yard. You smile to yourself, thinking how nice it is that people will try this energetically to get into the spirit of the season. As the homes and businesses grow sparser and the winding country road opens up ahead, you see that the sun is setting with a beautiful display of pinks and oranges. You sip your hot chocolate, feeling
feeling the steam warm your nose a little bit. The scenery on either side of the road takes on a soothing, repetitive quality. Split rail fences surround mostly empty pastures, which have not yet entirely lost their green color. Although the muted palette of autumn has done much of its work. At the bottom of each of several long farm driveways, the closed gate is decorated with a large wreath. Set back from the road on a hill, one ranch-style home has a replica of Santa and his reindeer perched on the roof. You smile to yourself, thinking of all the children who must be excited to spy it as they drive by. The music in the car is mostly classic holiday tunes by famous singers from many years ago. As you roll through this somewhat rural area, you get the feeling you have been transported back in time. Looking at so many of these farms, it's easy to imagine you are driving by the same place that was there decades before. The timelessness of the scenery adds to the magical feeling. The farm stands are not closed for the season. Although the usual abundance of vegetables and fruits is no longer visible, they have replaced produce with jams, jellies, wreaths, handmade gifts, and even freshly cut Christmas trees. As sunset, gives way to twilight. You see hay bales in front of these roadside stops, illuminated with colorful lights, inviting travelers to come in. You are tempted, but you know there will be plenty for you to explore at the antique store. As you near your destination, you pass an elementary school on your right. It looks like it might be the night of a holiday concert. The parking lot is full of cars, and families are streaming into the brightly lit front door of the school. Children are dressed up in neatly pressed pants and dresses. Some are wearing hair ribbons. You think about all the concerts you performed in as a child, standing on the risers and clapping in unison, or playing the handbells. There is no holiday event as heartfelt as a children's concert. You think to yourself, it makes you happy. 
just as you reach the end of your warm cocoa, the antique store appears up ahead. It looks absolutely charming. The owners have taken great care to generously string white lights around every inch of the building. Roof line, windows, and all the angles on the wraparound porch are twinkling like stars in the deepening gloom. Through the tall windows, you can see chandeliers brightly illuminated inside and people moving back and forth across the windows. The party appears to be in full swing. You're excited to take a look for yourself. Your friend turns into the driveway and rolls past several rows of parked cars to find a spot in the unpaved parking lot. Leaving your empty mugs in the car, you open the doors and step out into the bracing night air. Again, you sense the incoming snowfall in the air. You close your eyes and breathe deeply, relishing the childhood memories of happy winter days that it brings. You marvel at the fact that you never outgrow the excitement of an impending snowfall. As you walk toward the antique store, you see a food truck doing a brisk business. The people inside the service window have hats and fingerless gloves on. They are handing out baked goods coffees, and hot cider. The delicious, spicy scent of apples floats by you as you pass. This place may have to be the last stop on your way back to the car, you think? You step onto the paved path that approaches the front of the house, passing through a small swinging gate. It is invitingly propped open for the guests. As you ascend the wooden steps to the front porch, you can hear a distant sound of singing somewhere in the house. It must be carolers, you think, and you lean one ear in a bit, trying to figure out which song they are performing. Just as the name is on the tip of your tongue, your friend opens the front door. Warmth and golden light spill out onto the porch, and with it, the low hum of many friendly conversations. You step into the front hall and are immediately surrounded by activity. To the left, 
at the cash register. Numerous employees are busy ringing up customers and wrapping gifts. People who are waiting for their purchases are standing around in pairs and small groups, talking in low voices and laughing. To your right, there is a magnificent Christmas tree. It nearly touches the ceiling, and it is decorated entirely with things that are white. Bows, painted ornaments, glass baubles, and lights. At the very top, a white star sparkles. It is covered in glitter and glowing from within. You realize that everything on the tree is for sale. Gently turning one of the glass ornaments, you admire the artistry. It looks handmade and is etched with an intricate pattern. You nestle the ornament lightly back into the tree, where it sparkles elegantly among the branches. Looking up, you realize your friend has wandered into the big room next door. You know from past visits that it is a high ceiling space full of chandeliers, kitchenwares, and other beautiful things. Stepping through the doorway, you see that you have already found the source of the lovely music. A trio of carolers has been set up in the far corner of the room. They are now performing a pretty a cappella version of Silent Night. And you think... How wonderfully it suits the mood. An enticing smell of cinnamon fills the room. Previously, you have always been here in the daytime. The room looks quite different now. The lights have been lowered for this evening event and the chandeliers are sparkling above your head. Long strings of white lights have been subtly woven around china cupboards and windows. Surrounded by the tiny white orbs, you feel as if you are suspended in the stars. The room has also been generously decked out with fresh, evergreen bows. You inhale the pine scent deeply and close your eyes for a moment. You hear other guests quietly whispering so as not to disturb the people listening to the music. Opening your eyes, you take in the small touches that have transformed this room and made it so merry. Where regular dinnerware once stood, now there is holiday-themed tableware. Some of it is boldly decorated with Santa and his reindeer. It has a distinctly folksy, vintage feel to it. For subtler merrymakers, 
there is a delicate set of bone china with small holly sprigs and gold trim. You gently pick up one of the matching teacups and marvel at how elegant it feels in your hand. Placing the cup back in its saucer, you look around for your friend. He is across the room, looking at a table full of handmade angels. You walk over to join him. Each one is unique. Some are made from twisted metal and have a very rustic feel to them. Others are made of quilted fabric, suiting a person with a homespun taste in decorations. Your favorite of these angels is not standing on the table at all. It is hanging from a hook on the wall, feeling as light as air. This tiny angel is made from feathers and what appears to be small curls of shaved wood. It is so precious that you know you must have it for your friend who collects angels. You gingerly lift the charming decoration from its hook and cradle it in your hand. On a nearby table, there is a small display of German Christmas pyramids. They are two, three, or even four levels tall. Each level has a rotating ring of little characters that spins around, such as wise men or angels. On the very top, is a wooden fan. Down on the lowest level, candle holders jut out from each side of the pyramid. When the candles are lit, the heat rises, making the fan turn. As long as the candles are burning, all the figurines will keep going in circles. It is truly a marvel of holiday engineering. You walk past an antique mirror that is festively draped in greenery and shiny gold ribbons. The glass is not perfect anymore, but that's part of its charm. As you move by, you see yourself in the reflection, but you are surrounded by the twinkling lights that fill the room. You have the illusion of seeing through the looking glass to another world. Your friend has disappeared through the door to the hallway, and you suspect he has gone upstairs. Taking your little feathery angel, you round the corner and begin climbing the staircase to the top. The railing is strung with green velvet ribbons that have been beautifully tied into bows. The steps creak lightly under your feet, and you can hear the footsteps of other patrons 
treading the boards above your head as you go. On the landing at the top, you are greeted by the delicious smell of hot cider. A small table has been set up with paper cups, and a sign invites you to help yourself. You can't resist the offer, so you stop and pour yourself one. The cup holds just a few sips, which is the perfect amount to warm you up on this chilly night. You aren't sure which way your friend has gone, but you are certain to run into him whichever direction you choose. You decide to go left and find yourself in a room full of record bins. This is quite a bit of luck because you have a friend who got a new turntable this year and he is building up his record collection. You stand at one of the bins and begin flipping through. Some of the artists are people you've never even heard of. Others you remember well, and seeing the album covers of so many years past feels very nostalgic. After going through more than one bin, you find the perfect jazz album. You cannot believe your good fortune. Taking it from the bin, you slide it under your arm. Now, you have two great finds that will shorten your shopping list. This has already been a great evening. You pass through into the next room and find out where your friend has been. The owners of the store have spread a huge jigsaw puzzle out on a table here and left a sign inviting guests to help put it together. You look at the box to see what the picture is supposed to be. It's a charming vintage illustration of an old-fashioned Main Street, decked out for the holidays. So far, the guests have been able to put together most of the edge pieces, but there is much that is left to be done. Your friend is trying to complete a section that forms an antique car. You stand next to him and spot two pieces that obviously fit together. Sliding the pieces next to each other, you lock them in place. Your friend grins at you and laughs. He says you have beginner's luck. You are pretty sure he's right. Leaving the puzzle behind, the two of you wander around the rest of the room, which is filled with children's toys. Many of these items can be found here year-round, but your attention is drawn to the wooden sled in the corner. It's of the old style with metal rails 
and a stewing bar in the front. It has a red bow tied to it, which matches the metal rails. Your friend comments that it's the perfect porch decoration, and you agree. Passing through the doorway, you find yourselves in a room you enjoy every time you're here. It's full of used and vintage books. There are always delightful new volumes here to browse through. For the holiday season, the staff has set up a special display of beautiful children's picture books. There are two child-sized rocking chairs nearby, and a preschooler is sitting in one, earnestly paging through a book that is almost too big for her lap. Her father is leaning over her shoulder, commenting on the pictures. You turn your attention to a stack of cookbooks. Most of them are unfamiliar to you, but that is the best part, in your opinion. You are especially interested in one about baking old-fashioned holiday cookies. Paging through it, you see it has recipes for cookies you've never tried making, such as ginger snaps and Midwestern-style bars. Even though you are already carrying two other items, you decide you will get this intriguing cookbook as a gift to yourself. You stack it on top of the record album and slide them both under your arm. Your friend has found the perfect book to give to one of his friends. It's a very old volume of fairy tales with beautiful illustrations on heavy, cream-colored paper. The cover is a deep red color with letters printed in gold. He is delighted to have found something for this person. As he says, she is an avid collector of obscure and old-fashioned folklore. The room next door is mostly filled with furniture. But you are drawn to a display of handmade advent calendars displayed on a table. Each of them is in a different shape. One is a house. Another is the shape of a pine tree. And yet another is in the shape of an angel. All of them have little doors you can open one for each day of Advent. Small treats and surprises can be placed inside for children to open each morning. Your friend tells you about the paper Advent calendar he had as a child, with chocolate inside each door. He laughs, explaining he got overexcited one year and ate all the chocolate on December 10th. He adds that the beauty of these calendars 
is that the adults can put the chocolates in the calendar one by one. You think to yourself that this is a very smart way to prevent holiday sugar overload. Since you both have your hands full at this point, your friend suggests making your purchases and stopping at the food truck for some dessert. This sounds like a splendid idea. So you make your way back to the top of the creaky stairs and slowly descend. Soon, you find yourselves back in front of the glittering tree in the entryway. The staff at the counter are all wearing funny holiday sweaters. A woman wearing reindeer antlers on a headband cheerfully accepts your purchases from you and offers you a box for the delicate angel. You gratefully accept and watch her deftly pack up your treasures and put them in a large shopping bag with a handle. You thank her and wish her a happy holiday, and she responds with her own good wishes. You and your friend pull open the front door, and the chilly air rushes in. It's quite refreshing after being inside the crowded store for the last hour. Stepping out onto the porch, you feel that snow cannot be far away. It's dark out now, but you are fairly certain you are feeling tiny cold pinpricks on your cheeks and nose. Pulling your coat collars up around your necks, you make your way toward the food truck. It is still brightly lit and serving customers as they exit the store. The delicious smell of sugar and cinnamon wafts out the service window. Two people inside the window are chatting with customers as they fill their orders. The servers are wearing jolly hats that have jingle bells on them. After looking at the menu, you each order a hot drink. To go with it, you get a cider donut, and your friend selects a peppermint brownie. Taking your treats to a nearby bench, you sit down, setting your steaming cups next to you as you peel back the wax paper wrappers on your snacks. You happily take a few rapturous bites, lingering over the cider flavor, which always seemed to provide the perfect transition between fall and winter. The donut and the brownie are soon eaten, but you and your friend sit with your cups cradled in your hands, allowing the steam to warm your noses. It's a great excuse to savor the festive atmosphere of the country store. 
you decide to finish your drinks in the car. As you stand up, now snow starts to fall around you in huge flat flakes. They drift down a sea of crystals floating across the nearby streetlight. You imagine momentarily that you are inside a charming old snow globe as this perfect holiday moment unfolds in the night air. As you make your way toward your parking place, you stretch your fingers out and watch the snowflakes land on your hand and vanish, each one slightly different than the other. A little girl nearby is spinning in circles with her face upturned, laughing with delight. Soon you are back in the warmth of the car as a winter wonderland appears outside the windows. As you drive back down the country road toward home, you see that the school concert is just letting out. The doors of the auditorium are open, casting a warm golden glow into the dark evening. Parents and their children spill out of the doors, dispersing into the parking lot. Happy children hop about excitedly, wearing festive headbands and proper hats. As the winding road unfolds ahead, your eye follows the split rail fences that you pass. They are barely visible in the darkness undulating with the rolling countryside. Your eyes begin to feel heavy as you listen to the instrumental holiday music playing on the car stereo. By the time your friend pulls back into your neighborhood, you are sleepy enough to be thinking fondly of your bed. As you guide through the streets near your home, you can see white lights, colored lights, and entire Christmas trees illuminated on stairways and in front windows. The night is filled with twinkling orbs and sparkling decorations of all kinds. For this moment, the world shines with beauty. Sometime later, you are gratefully snuggling deep into your warm flannel sheets. Your pillows are so soft, and your fluffy comforter is nestled around you. Turning over, you can see that the snow is falling thickly outside your window. There is now a blanket of white covering everything. 
You marvel at how the landscape of your neighborhood has become frosted, like a cake in a matter of hours. Just by looking at it, you know that the ground would crunch lightly underfoot, absorbing every other sound as you walk. Smiling at the thought, you give in to your drowsiness and close your eyes. When you do, you still see the flakes of sparkling white snow gently drifting through the darkness. But in your wandering mind, it soon becomes a thousand stars on a tall tree. Without even noticing, you slip slowly into a wintry dream. 